Alright guys, Hatch Crab here and today I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The major three qualifiers are over and in traditional optic fashion they've made it work against FaZe when it truly mattered most. An incredibly important series today. FaZe go three and two as always, but Optic and Shotzi especially deliver a stellar performance today to take down the major two champions on their way into their home major with a lot of wind in their cells. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. So we've got to dive into of course the Subliner Surge series and this was honestly so mad to me just because we know of course what happened in the Subliners versus Optic series. Optic got destroyed so you thought okay Subliners are on a pretty good reign of form. Okay it was close three maps they played but it was nonetheless the three O's. You thought okay Subliners should be pretty good against Surge. I had them winning this one 3-2 but um, that's not what happened at all. Now of course FaZe went into their series. If they'd have won and beaten Optic they would have secured Vegas Legion the winner's bracket spot for the Major and um, unfortunately for Legion it seems the script writers were just not in their favour. Now, of course, Legion, what they should have done is just beaten Los Angeles Gooders. That would have put themselves in the best spot, but they failed to do that, and therefore they found themselves 2-3, and three, needing some help from FaZe after Optic got beaten by the Subliners. But speaking of the Subliners, Surge destroyed them game 1, 251-81. Game 2 was actually outrageous. Some drama about this, as is always, because Kismet was spotted using this spot. This is known as a GA spot. If you lay down here, you guys can see that Kismet's head is barely noticeable like um you can honestly not see it from the other's perspective but he can see you quite clearly so um this is known as a, a banned spot i didn't think the pros were allowed to use this to be honest okay it's not banned by the league it's ga the pro so you can't use it because it's the staircase glitch but um when scrappy was calling him out i think even sasha replied says it's super blatant and scrappy's like are we ever going to do anything about this or maybe i'm just going to go rogue as a result so yeah definitely some frustration about that but it didn't really matter in the end because subliners lost this map anyway Surge have improved their search and destroy a lot and Subliner's search is always kind of sketchy and this is where I thought they might be able to have the edge in this series. Not the case though right and Siv actually no scoped Hydra here I thought was insane. So Hydra tries to get this kill gets destroyed and it was quite clearly a no scope from first observation as well and we can see it from the other POV as well here on the right hand side when um you know Siv gets this kill on Hydra I mean unbelievable stuff. Probably wouldn't have won the round anyway but still was pretty ridiculous. And that was helping Surge over the line in game two and then game three the control it goes there where as well. Priest, I think, went 1-8 and eight game 2, so he wasn't doing so well. Just some questions about the subliners, right? Because I still think they're a pretty good team. But Surge are there or thereabouts with the subliners right now. Online it's always a bit sketchy, and Hydra was making some ridiculous plays, but Pred was playing even better, right? And I do think, really, with the subliners, there's some questions around, I like Skies as a player, I like Kismet, I like Priest. Uh, Hydra's obviously a superstar, but they don't quite have the consistency that some of the top slayers in the league do. Skies went crazy against Optic, but then today, didn't really turn up too highly. Kismet's kind of, he's a bit on and off, I think, this season. More so than he was last year in Vanguard, and then Priest has been not, well, more underwhelming lately than he has been at the start of the game, let's say. And Surge, take advantage. I mean, Siv, it goes negative, 0.98. Accuracy had a good series as well, but Pred, again, man, a 1.34. Like, this guy does it all. Most damage than a lobby. Watching his PFE is just really, like, it's interesting to watch because his gun skill is great, but he puts himself in such good positions. Like, he's got this real good instinct for when to pre-aim, when to go fast, when to slow down, like when to hold a position. Like um, he really mixes up his play style so well where sometimes he's unexpected and catching you off guard, shooting you in the back, or sometimes he's just playing straight up in your face and winning all the gunfights. Like, one of those players, when, when he's on point, it's like, how are you meant to stop this? It's pretty outrageous. So Pred has another one of those series and Surge, an impressive run. So far this stage, they played some pretty weak teams on the whole. This was their first series that they won against an actual good team and they won it impressively. Now, after that first series, I thought this was really nice and um, about time. And I don't know how much Puckett was involved in this, but I know from speaking to him at Major 2 that he was very much on board with trying to do the best they could to give Zinni the proper send-off that he deserved. And of course, we know full well that when Skump retired, he got a massive send-off. When Krim retired in the off-season, it never really happened. And um, they finally put together a phenomenal video with a lot of players discussing him and Krim6's career moments and all this stuff. Just looking back at Krim6's 
sixes, you know, best moments, of course, 38 championship wins, all this stuff from Crim's career, and uh, just, you know, putting it all into a nice, beautiful package to wrap up in a bow and present to Crim and the community, because he's doing the watch parties now as well. So I thought it was nice. It was about time we got this, of course, from the league, but it was incredibly well done, and Crim really enjoyed it as well, which I thought was great to see. And, um, you know, Skump kind of said on stream, yeah, this Crim guy, like, he's the greatest and deserves all the credit that he was getting, and the video, of course, that the CDL here put together for him. Now, I thought it was quite funny from Carberry. He says, Matt and I must have died, but Fat Man is funny. Now, in fairness, I believe when Karma retired, they did some retirement video for Karma. Now, um, we know really that when the CDL has its inception, they kind of just tried to forget that anything pre CDL even really existed, and Karma didn't really get the credit that I think he deserved when he retired, most certainly not, given his achievements in COD. Now, I think in fairness, they have done something for Karma and Formal, and of course, Skump, they did a big one when he retired, and then now Crimsix as well. So good to see that everyone's getting their credit, but, um, you know, you could argue it's been a long time coming, and maybe they should do some other ones for other players as well, that have, especially going forwards, you know, for Clay and for others, whenever their time comes, I'm sure they'll have something ready. So Crim really enjoyed it. I thought that was a great little touch there from the league, and a great timing as well. Okay, you could argue it's a bit weird to do this at this particular moment in, like, a random Sunday, but it's not really a random Sunday. The final set of series of the qualifiers going into what could be the biggest major of the year, Optics Major, on the day that's going to get the most viewership in terms of online league matches anyway with Optic versus FaZe. So just, I think, a really good time to do this. Now, speaking of Optic FaZe, let's dive into it. I said today that I thought, okay, Optic, I think they'll win at least one map here. I thought, well, you know, they, they're they going to have to break FaZe's S&D record to win this series because I thought, there's no way Optic are winning this 3-1. I said it in the video. I was like, surely Optic can't win 3-1. So they've probably got to win a game five if they want to do it. But it turns out that's not the case. Now, FaZe have not been particularly impressive in these qualifiers. They beat three poor teams. They lost to Thieves, right? And they didn't even take that game five. And now they've lost to Optics. So the only two decent teams that FaZe have played, they've gone down to. And their respawn is suspect. There's no doubt. They're bailing themselves out with their search and destroy. But at some point, FaZe's search is going to fall off and isn't going to be quite as good. Like, they're now on a 12 win streak in search. It's outrageous. And you'd think that that would at least guarantee them a game five against Thieves and Optics but they lost all six respawns they played against those two teams respectively. And Optic are just this team and it's, I don't know if it's a mental block for FaZe or what it is, but whenever Optic play FaZe, I think it's more so that Optic just turn up against FaZe. Like, for some reason, when they play FaZe, they just absolutely come different, and maybe it's a matchup thing as well. Like, it seems like Dashi matches up very well with Selium, and Selium had a tough series here, and Shotzi, when he's on point, is really matching the Terrors very well, and Sasha had a tough time in this series as well. Dashi was making plays here game one. This went to the wire, though. Honestly, if Optic had choked this map, I genuinely think they would have lost the series 3-0. Like, you know, this would have been a round of if they'd have choked it, they would have been gutted. And um, they almost, like, one of the plays they're making, they kind of gave up spawns for one of the hard points and FaZe brought it back. But I've never really seen it. Usually it ends, these matches, the hill before. This is one of the best matches of hard point you're going to watch. Again, Hotel, Optic versus FaZe, hard point. Like, it's just bagger after bagger. Grade A bag out, I guess, is what a scum calls it nowadays. Like, this was an absolutely absurd situation. A PC, by the way, had 41 kills. He was doing it all for FaZe, and yet Shotzi comes in, gets one. Dashi can't quite get that kill on Cell, but the spawns are still coming in for Optic. Ghosty goes down as well, but who goes massive with these two? Or Dashi gets the second, and he's in the hard point. I mean, like, absolutely. I don't know how to even describe the hard point. I've never seen one end in that fashion, and um, you know, just the way it concluded for Optic was absurd. I thought FaZe had it, then I thought Optic had it, then I thought FaZe had it, then Optic win it 252-47 huge map win for them, but FaZe can always fall back on their search and destroy play, and uh, look, this series on the whole was one of the most entertaining you're going to see this entire season. I think it might have been the most entertaining series, actually, uh, certainly online we've had so far, up there with Optic versus FaZe, the last time they played. Now, um, okay, there were some interesting rounds here in the search. There was some that Optic arguably probably feel like they could have won, maybe should have won, and uh, again, they tied up 6-3. Who can only made a miracle 1v3 in the final round, but it wasn't quite to be. Optic go down 6-3, I think, okay, here we go. Classic stuff. It's probably going to go game five and then we'll see if Optic can break the streak. But it wasn't necessary because they won the control and this was ridiculous to me because Optic's control has been bad, just straight up bad this season compared to where they need to be. FaZe has been very good. I will say as well, right, the fact that Slasher died there, got to give some credit to FaZe. Now, like, I don't know if Selim is using loudness equalization. He probably is. I don't know if Abizi is, but like Slasher is a man of his word. It's quite clear that Slasher and I think the majority of FaZe aren't using it. Like, it was actually quite nice to see players making plays even without dead silence and still making 
flanks happen. And, um, you know, Sasha got caught off by it a couple of times. For example, here, I'm pretty sure Shotzi's dead. He runs out. Okay, maybe he doesn't run out and he still gets the kill anyway. But I saw some other occasions where they were getting caught off guard by players who should have been making noise that they just didn't necessarily hear because they didn't have the sound setting on. So give some credit to FaZe for that. I don't know what Optic were doing here because, you know, maybe Optic felt like they needed all the advantages they could possibly get. And FaZe do have a good 3-2 and two run in a set of qualifiers. But Optic take the control and hopefully, for Optic fans' sake, this is the turnaround in that game mode because they need to be better in control if they actually want to win anything this season. And certainly the case, well, in this series. And it was such a huge map to win. And then they played Mercado. I was looking at these vetoes thinking, damn, Mercado Harpoon, it's such a good one for FaZe. But Optic Chalo on it and Ghosty does basically nothing this map. But Shotzi and Dashi just absolutely did it all right. And Shotzi, yes, at times he can do too much, go too rogue, make some plays that you think, well, if he didn't jump out there, if he didn't dolphin dive there, maybe he wins that more often than he does otherwise. But Shotzi's a smart kid. He knows how to play COD. And mechanically, he's unbelievable. I've seen a lot of slander the way of Shotzi the last few days that I don't fully understand given like um you know what he is to this franchise and what he will continue to be for this franchise in my opinion and he was the key deciding factor in this one even got the final kill as well to close out the series 25207 was not expecting phase to go down in that fashion but they did an optic after being nowhere against subliners just come massive the next day and i've said this about optic before and i'll probably say it about optic again they are going to be one of these streaky teams that's just the way they play the game one day they might come out flat and the next day the slang is there from shotzi and they look unbelievable against a team of FaZe's caliber. I do think though part of this is FaZe's lack of respawn ability. They're not particularly good against the top teams of respawn right now, it's got to be said, and their search streak will come to an end at some point. On LAN, I think they'll get better again, but Optic are going to give themselves huge confidence here, especially after what they did against subliners. Seems to me that Dashi as well is indicating they went back to the Hex Quarters for this series, right? Because we know they've been playing from the Envy HQ. The Hex Quarters, I believe, is going away soon, and Hex is kind of doing away with it. But I guess the Optic guys played from there today. They think the internet's better or whatever. And um, that seems to be potentially a difference maker for them. And unfortunately for Clay, after Clay said hashtag phase up, because if phase beat Optic, then Vegas would have gone to winners. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And then Dashi's just laughing, right? We know these guys have had their beef over time. And uh, Dashi was certainly rubbing salt in the wounds of this one. And just the overall numbers here, right? Abizi was absolutely doing it all. Selim has a 0.89. The world must be collapsing. But it was Dashi, but especially Shotzi that I thought was the standout in this particular series. And the final series, just to rub salt in the wounds of my predictions on the day, Boston versus Thieves. I thought this was going to be a close series. Boston, another team like Optic, where when they're on points, they are seriously on point. And Beans has kind of been up and down so far this, uh, well, since he's come into the league, right? He's had some bad series, some good series. But when he's on, he's certainly on. And it's the same thing with this entire team, right? They bowled over Thieves at times in the series. Thieves, though, some good resilience. They did rather well game two to tie this up because Boston dominated the first part of this game to search and destroy. Octane was hitting some nice snipes, got this 1v2, ended up securing his team, the 1-1 situation going into the control, and I thought, okay, damn, yeah, Thieves are back, they did this the other day, Thieves losing game one, regaining for the rest of the series, but it turns out that wasn't really the case, eventually a game five here was forced between the two of them, about time, to be honest, that we got a good game five just like this, and, um, you know, Boston were making some nice plays here in the control as well, they won the control, lost though, I honestly thought Boston are pretty good at this map, so in fairness are Thieves, they could have probably won this Hydro, it was back and forth, and then game Game 5 was actually a complete demolition job by the guys on the Boston Breach. They destroyed Thieves. It was quickly 4-0, 5-0. I think maybe it was briefly considered that the, uh, the full sale might be on 5-1. And then Beans uh, clutched up in a 1 versus 1 against Octane, I believe, to send it to 6-1. And Boston secure the second seed. That's a pretty big deal because I believe that now means they play Optic round 1 at the Major. Had they lost this, it would have been different. Had Thieves won, then Optic would have played Thieves round 1 at the Major. So, um, you know, pretty crazy. We'll look at the bracket in detail tomorrow, but that's going to do it for today. Final series stats are like this. I was tuning into Crim Six's watch party and he was giving his thoughts on the Boston server. Vivid, though, got a mega fright. Like, especially map four, he had, like, no kills at all and Awakening went off, and his teammates bailed him out hard here, and, like, Nero and Vivid are a duo that, you know, it's just the way they play, right? Sometimes Vivid is open to getting completely destroyed. Nero's the same. That happens this series, but the ARs bailed them out. Awakening with a 1.2 Beans with a 1.1, but so much damage, most in the lobby by a mile. And on the other side, you know, classic kind of Thieves scoreline. Kenny had a particularly good series, but their search when it mattered game five was just not quite there. But of course, LAN coming up soon. Thieves always get better. And probably the best eight teams have secured the winner's bracket spots going into the major. We'll discuss loads more on this, I'm sure, over the coming couple of days and certainly tomorrow morning. Very much enjoy to your thoughts.
in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.